One of the smartest animals on the planet just can't catch a break. Male octopuses age instantly, having barely reached the second half of their life, and die without fully realizing the potential of their brain. But what if you help them avoid this fate? Who will be the smartest creature on the planet then? Let's find out. Octopoda includes roughly 300 most different species, but they all have one thing in common. They live a damn short life. Some species survive only up to six months, some up to two years. The giant Pacific octopus can live three years, and this makes it a real grandpa in the world of cephalopods. But why do octopuses die young? Weirdly enough, this is entirely the fault of evolution. It just didn't give them a safe way to procreate. I mean, for many animals, mating can be quite risky if the female is larger than the male, but when it comes to octopuses, the differences in size are sometimes mind-blowing. Take Tremo octopus genus, for example. Females can reach six and a half feet in length and males only one inch. The weight ratio is at least 10,000 to one and could probably reach 40,000 to one. It's clear that under these conditions, procreation can be a little risky. Furthermore, females very often kill males after mating or right during it. What for? Well, first of all, another octopus makes for a nutritious and delicious dinner, or at least a snack, depending on its size. And second, sometimes the female just suddenly gets aggressive. Sorry, buddy. Today's definitely not your day. To somehow protect themselves, male octopuses have grown an ectocotylus, something like a modified tentacle specially designed for reproduction at a distance. Using this extra arm, the octopus delivers to the female everything necessary, and at the same time, he doesn't risk as much. Does it help? Well, sometimes. In some octopuses, for example the Argonauts, a long ectocotylus detaches from the male's body and loads everything it needs, swims on its own until it reaches the female. Hey, did I tell you to detach? Sorry, duty calls. But let's say the male survived the mating. Even if he came across a calm female or the ectocotylus did its job, the challenges are not over yet. Mating causes males' health to deteriorate rapidly. They enter a period of aging and death within a few weeks or even days. Why? Well, from the point of view of evolution, their mission is accomplished, so it's time to rest. The genitals of the octopus mature thanks to the optic gland, which also switches off the digestive glands, and the male simply dies of starvation. Females got a better deal and can live for months or even years after mating. They lay eggs and protect them until the offspring hatch. The well, octopus mothers still have to survive without food, which is why they eventually die. Look, am I the only one who thinks this scheme is not that great? Okay, what if the male won't mate? Suppose we have to deprive him of his life's mission. Will this help save his life? Oddly enough, it will. Maybe it won't be a life full of fun, but it'll be a long one. Remember when I mentioned the giant Pacific octopus, the grandpa among other octopuses? If he avoids mating, he can live up to five years old in the wild. Of course, scientists with their lab experiments couldn't stand idly by. They removed the optic glands, which activate mating and stop digestion, causing the octopus to stop reproducing, start eating and growing, and his lifespan became significantly longer. Hold on. If octopuses can live longer, why does evolution make them die? Seems like the researchers can't get a definite answer yet. If we disregard the answer like, well, that's just what evolution wanted, then perhaps the reason lies in overpopulation. After all, octopuses are born in huge numbers. Sometimes the number of fertilized eggs reaches 70,000. The entire world ocean would only have octopuses if nature hadn't figured out how to deal with them. But back to the issue of lifespan. What if all octopuses lived at least two years longer? The thing is, they're really damn smart. Unscrewing lids, squeezing through tiny holes, and perfect disguise are only part of the octopus's abilities. Each tentacle of the octopus acts as if it has its own independent mind and intent. If one of them is amputated, this tentacle will continue to respond to stimuli for the next hour. It can crawl away if it wants to. Perhaps the human hand from the Adams family once belonged to a human octopus. Octopuses also have excellent eyesight, memory, and are quick learners. Some species even use tools, and almost all have certain character traits. Can you imagine what these creatures will be capable of if you give them a little more time? Are they going to be as smart as me? I became so enlightened, it's like I lived for a hundred trillion billion years on trillions and trillions of planets like that, you know? Actually, it would even be logical, the longer a creature lives, the more it learns. We know octopuses can learn to handle tasks by watching other animals do it. That includes humans, too. Octopuses in captivity often learn to play and solve puzzles, because otherwise, 
they just get bored. Yes, this is the flip side of having a developed intellect. You need to be busy with something. In the German city of Coburg, an octopus named Otto was known to juggle his fellow tank mates around and throw stones to smash the glass. On several occasions, Otto even caused short circuits by shooting a stream of water into the overhead lamp. How did he even know how electricity works? No idea. Still, Otto somehow learned this. Did someone accidentally leave a physics textbook next to the tank? Get him! He knows too much! (laughs) So, it means if octopuses could start to live for a really long time, they'll be able to overthrow us and take over the planet? After all, it worked for humans. Once upon a time, our distant ancestors could barely survive to 30 years. Lack of food, diseases, and other problems simply prevented them from living a long life. But today, we can easily live up to 70. You could even say that 70 is the new 30 in modern society. And as soon as humans began to live longer, they had time to invent, explore, and conquer the planet. So are we really sure it's a good idea to increase the lifespan of octopuses? What if they can really take over the world and then, I don't know, fly away to conquer space? Relax. Yes, octopuses are very smart, but they develop very slowly. In their current state, they will not be able to get out of the water to wage a war against humans. Octopuses need to stay wet in order to survive. They won't be able to evolve rapidly. Over the past 300 million years, octopuses have not changed much, while humans have existed for only 200,000 years, and over this time they've taken over the planet. On the other hand, octopuses will be really comfortable in space. They are neutrally buoyant, that is, they do not float or sink, which means that gravity is not relevant to them. Have you seen how vertebrates act in zero gravity? They're terrified. But the octopuses will feel great, provided they take water with them. On the one hand, this is all a bit reassuring. But on the other, I'm not the only one who thought octopuses could take over the world. Moreover, they are quite capable of studying us as we are studying them. The most striking example is the story of Craig Foster, who dived without a wetsuit and established contact with a female octopus. For several weeks, she evaded him and hid in her den, camouflaged herself, swam away, well, did everything an octopus is supposed to do when it spots a predator. But over time, the animal realized Foster is not a threat. And then after 26 days of near-obsessive wooing, she reached out and touched him. The female was so accustomed to the man, she began to let him near her den, take him on the hunt, and generally allowed him to be around as much as Foster wanted. Perhaps if the octopuses lived longer, she'd have time to teach him a couple of tricks. But if octopuses are so incredibly smart, why haven't they come up with some reliable way to survive after mating? They can unscrew lids, throw stones, and tame divers, but they can't deal with the female? Well, actually, they made some progress here, too. Over millions of years of natural selection, male octopuses have found a couple of creative solutions for dealing with particularly dangerous females. Well, the males didn't succeed in growing bigger. They came up with a better idea. One strategy involves finding a good spot near the den of one or more females. If it comes across such a spot, the octopus settles down there and then keeps one or two females within the reach of its, well, that very appendage for reproduction. Basically, the male just extends it and reaches for the female while staying safe in his den. That's fertilization from around the corner. Honey, come here. Uh, you know, let's not rush things. Don't even try to imagine humans adopting this strategy. Seriously, don't. True, this approach doesn't completely solve the problem, but the octopuses clearly understand what's what and are working on it. Give them some time. After all, it's only been 300 million years. See you later.